Hello everyone, this is Ola. In this video, I'll discuss the hearing mechanism. Let's go ahead and review the anatomy of the ear quickly. There are three ears, external, middle, and internal. The external ear has the auditory canal and auricle. The middle ear has three little bones that we call ossicles. In between the external and middle ear, we have the ear drum or the tympanic membrane. Then the inner ear has the cochlea, and this has the receptors for hearing. So as you hear a sound, the sound vibrations go along the auditory canal, then strike the tympanic membrane that vibrates. The vibration now uh, goes to the three little ossicles, malleus, ancus, and stapes. The stapes bone is attached to the oval window, which is the gate for the inner ear. So now the fluid in the cochlea moves and then the receptors transduce this vibration movement into an action potential going along the vestibulocochlear nerve. The sound before going to the cochlea needs to be amplified. Why? Because the cochlea is full of fluid but the external and middle ear has air. And the movement uh, of the fluid is difficult in compared to the movement in the air. So the sound or the vibration needs to be amplified. And this happens by two mechanisms. The first one is that the three little bones, malleus, incus, and stapes, vibrate. The second way to amplify the sound is that the oval window is much smaller than the tympanic membrane. So they work like a microphone amplifying the sound before it goes to the cochlea. Now the cochlea is the part of the inner ear that has the receptors for hearing and it has three chambers the scala vestibuli which is the upper one the scala tympani which is the lower one both of them are full of fluid that we call perilymph in the middle we have the scala media that we call also cochlear duct. The cochlear duct has a membrane that we call basilar membrane. The basilar membrane has the stereocilia, the hearing receptors. The tip of the hearing receptors are attached to a gelatinous membrane that we call tectorial membrane. So as the fluid moves, the stereocilia bend against the tectorial membrane, and as a result, the neurotransmitter glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, is released, leading to creation of an action potential along the cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve, and the final destination of the sound is in the hearing center in the temporal loop. There are two windows, the oval window, which is the gate for the inner ear. Here, stapes is attached to that oval window. And on the opposite side, there is the round window. The round window allows fluid in the cochlea to move under pressure, which stimulates the stereocilia to create an action potential. So if the round window is damaged, this can lead to neural deafness. We as human are able to hear uh, sounds of frequencies that range from 20 to 2000 Hertz. The high pitched sound 
with higher frequency stimulate the cochlear duct closer to the stapes and the low pitched sound of low frequency stimulates the cochlear duct away from the stapes then medium sized pitch they stimulate here the cochlear duct midway between the high frequency and low frequency sounds this way we are able to distinguish between different sounds there is a condition that called uh, perspicuosis which is uh, a condition happens with aging and here the individual uh, lose his or her ability to recognize high pitched sounds. This is a um, diagram uh, taken from a recent article and here is the frequency and as we age the weakness to detect um, high frequency sound really declines and the higher the frequency the lower ability to identify. So if there are aging couples, husband and wife, the wife has high pitched sound, the husband has low pitched sound. So the husband will not be able to hear his wife, but it's not the other way around. The wife will be able to distinguish her husband's sound because it is a low pitched sound and perspicuosis happens uh, or affect, it affects the high Pitched, pitched sounds or high frequency of sounds. Acoustic reflex. This happens in response to an extremely loud sound. So the muscles found in the middle ear, the tensor tympani muscle and the other muscle a tedious muscle, both of them will lock up the sound. So they prevent the three ossicles, malleus, incus, and the stapes to move so that damaging sound does not go uh, to the cochlea. Also, this reflex happens as we chew food, for example. So we do not hear the chewing sound as uh, obvious, uh, which is kind of annoying sometimes. The auditory tube is the tube between the middle ear and the throat. And its function here is to equalize the, um, the pressure on each side of the tympanic membrane. So suppose that you are flying in an airplane. What happens is that the pressure in the middle ear goes up and this leads to a kind of bulging of the tympanic membrane. At this point of time, the ostician tube opens and as it opens, the pressure is going to be relieved from the middle ear. So again, the function of the ostician tube or auditory tube is to equalize the pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. It opens uh, also when you chew gum, when you swallow, when you yawn. All of these um, variables lead to opening of the station tube. That's why it's a good idea to chew the gum as you are flying up in an airplane. All right, let's go with some review question and let's put the auditory pathway in the correct order, beginning from the external ear. So first we have the external ear, then the sound goes to the auditory tube to strike the tympanic membrane. Then it goes in the middle ear to the auditory ossicles, malleus, incus, and stapes. Stapes is attached to the oval window, which is the gate for the inner ear. Then the vibration now goes to the organ of corti, 
the hearing receptors in the cochlea, and now action potential goes along the cochlear nerve. What are the auditory ossicles in order from the tympanic membrane going to the oval window? We have milius, incus, and stapes, nis. Okay, the external and middle ear are air filled cavities. On the other hand, the inner ear is fluid filled. The scala media is also called the cochlear duct, and the basilar membrane sits at the base of the scala media, and this houses the receptors for hearing that we call stereocilia or organ of corti. What window allows fluid in the cochlea to move? This is the round window. The action potential for hearing is generated by the excitatory neurotransmitter, glutamate, and then the action potential goes along the cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. The oval window is much smaller than what? Than the tympanic membrane. Therefore, they work like a microphone and the sound is amplified. What structure equalizes the pressure on each side of the tympanic membrane? It is the auditory tube, or we call it also a station tube.